three, two, one. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How's it going? Uh, so today we're going to interview and hang out with our friend Destin Sandlin, uh, a YouTube star from Huntsville, Alabama. We live in the same state. So, no, we, uh, don't, we don't say YouTube star. <laughs> I'm just <Josh>. kidding. <laughs> we just say redneck from North Alabama. <laughs> yeah, redneck from North Alabama. Uh, that's a little smarter than your average redneck. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna just hang out and talk about film, talk about life, talk about you know everything he's done. That's really cool. And uh, so if you haven't, if you guys don't know, we did a video together. Well, I mean, he did the video. We were just in the video about Indie Film Lab and the film processing, uh, just how we do things here at Indie Film Film Lab. And we've spent a lot of time just on the phone talking about stuff. And we hung out that day. It's a really great video. Check it out. Um, and so, which brings us to this interview, you know, we're going to talk to him about his background and like all this technical, like advancement in technology, but he uses film. So, uh, Destin, welcome to the show, man. Is this a show? This is not a show. It, what is it, this? It feels very much like a show. Your lighting <laughs> is a little over the top, to be honest with you. It's just so good. It's incredible. <laughs> it's, no, I, 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 uh. I'm excited to talk to you, man. I, I really, I really enjoy what you guys do at Indy, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm just grateful to have visited all that good stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Let's. What, let's chat. what do you think about the video, man? What do you think? How do you think it turned out? I thought, I thought it was awesome. It's so many good comments, so much positive feedback. I mean, I love it. Thank you for doing it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I certainly wanted to do it. Like, uh, film is something that I love. I enjoy it. And so the opportunity to do it was just fantastic. So it was, it was a really big deal for me. Um, yeah. And, and it was exciting to find that you guys were here in Alabama and it, you, you've got the process nailed. It's, it's awesome. It's so, so funny how people are, you, I'm sure you get this too, but like Alabama, wait a minute, you send your film to Alabama I'm like, why do they think that we're all barefoot and just dirt roads? Is that what how we've been portrayed through country music for years and years and years? Do you get that constantly? I do. Yeah, it's it's kind of a thing. So so your reputation <laughs> precedes you when you're from Alabama on the internet. It absolutely does. <laughs> but that's good because it keeps the property values low. So it's all good. It, it does, and the and the tax is lower. And uh, yeah, we can actually afford. Uh, a big enough house for all of our kids. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a big thing. It's a it really a big, big thing. thing. Yeah, absolutely. And being that you know we're all mailed mailed in, we could literally be anywhere. So, um, but yeah, let's let's start with you, man. I mean, you went to school at Alabama, mechanical engineer, and then I see you, at, you know, aerospace engineering. At I mean, we're gonna get we're gonna figure out how you got from this to YouTube. That's okay. our whole goal right now. And all right, let's, yeah, let's do it. So. Um, so University of Alabama, mechanical engineering. Um, then I started working for the Army, uh, something called the Army Test Evaluation Command. And at night, I was doing experiments in my garage. There's actually, let's see if I have the book. Um, it's, it, yep, here it is, one second. So have you ever heard of a guy named Dr. Harold Edgerton? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I have no idea. <laughs> have you have you not? No, man. No, so, definitely not. So Dr. Harold Edgerton, have you ever seen the famous uh photograph? Let me just find it for you here. The famous photograph of a bullet going through an apple. Have you ever seen that? Absolutely. I have seen that. Okay, so that was taken by Dr. Harold Edgerton. And I'm trying to find it right here. I, I found the one where a bullet's going through a uh a piece of what appears to be clay one second let me see if yeah i've seen the, the apple one it's like yeah it's like a freeze frame and it's oh like yeah an it's, apple exploding. it's it's iconic well here is here's a picture of a bullet going through uh, a piece of clay very cool and, and and what's what's fascinating about this is um dr edgerton developed a thing called the micro flash it's uh he actually made a company that made these little one microsecond flash units and he was able to create amazing photographs of all different kinds of things. And so that photograph of a bullet going through an apple was on my physics book in high school. And I was like, I have no idea what that is, but I, I want to do it. Here, here's a love it. Oh, if you can see that, that's a, 
a, a supersonic bullet. That's a Schlieren photograph. But Dr. Edgerton was, you know, you know, he 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 died. Well, what's interesting is this this particular book was signed the year I was born, uh, in in 1981. My uh, my thesis advisor gave me this in grad school, but I, I was influenced by his work. I, I I found some of the stuff that he did, and I just found it to be incredible. And so I wanted to recreate that stuff, and so I started making flash units in the garage and timing it with with microphones and taking photos of bullets as they were flying in my garage. That's what I was doing. And so- That's amazing, man. It was awesome. It was really, really fun. Some of the earliest Smart Everyday episodes are me doing that. And so um, I started playing around with that stuff and I realized, man, cameras are amazing. So and did so, you have a high-speed camera at that time or did you just try to like sync it with the flash? I made one. Uh, I, I made my own version of a high-speed camera by taking a DSLR. Okay opening the shutter in a dark room and then shooting a, a rifle in my garage. And based on where the microphone was in relation to the, the muzzle of the barrel, I could move the bullet further and further away from the gun. And so I could create the, the, uh, the illusion of a bullet leaving a barrel by taking 30 photographs at, you know, half a millisecond off the speed of sounds about one foot per millisecond. And so every 500 milliseconds, that gives you about six inches of travel and I could take 30 images. And if, if I did it like this, so if you did it like this, it would look jittery, but okay. if you turn towards the camera like this, it'll look nice and smooth. So you shot a bullet at your camera. Yeah. Per, kinda. Yeah. Kinda. Uh, you know, I took advantage of cosine oh, right, and, right. And, and did it that way. So it was really, really cool. And, um, at the same time, at work, I was using a lot of high-speed cameras for other things I was doing. So, is this is this in college? I, I, I'm not sure what time. What it was in grad school. Oh, while grad school. Okay. I, so, so, I'm working during the day. Okay. And then taking like one class at night. You know, slowly working towards my master's degree. And, and shooting bullets in your garage at night. Yeah, and this new thing called YouTube came out, and so I was just you know, saying, Hey, this is a neat thing. I'm, I'm learning. And I made a video about it. My, my wife had a, I got her a Mac laptop and it had iMovie on it. I made a little video about it, put it on this new thing called YouTube. And, uh, it just went from there. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. It's really neat. Yeah. That is very cool. Uh, that you've made, of course you made your own. Of course you did. Uh, that, I mean that, I think that's what separates you from a lot of folks is, uh, and I feel like I share this with you. I want to learn about this. I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out yeah. whether I have to buy this camera, make this camera. I want to know how this works. So I, I have a lot in common with you about that. That's how kind of Indy kind of got started. I'd send my film off and we'll get into this later, but I'd send my film off and get it back. And I'm like, how do they do that? I want to know how they did that. So I had to buy a scanner and kind of like figure it all out. So I, I can totally feel you on that, man. So um, you were you were, were an artist. You you were a, a bassist in a band, right? What's the name of the band? Trust Company. Trust Company. Okay. Right. Yeah. And you guys are like big time, right? Like we, plat, we did plat, hit pretty big for a minute. minute platinum now. record, gold record, gold. gold. We hit gold. We're very close to platinum. I bet uh, we're about a hundred thousand records off from. And this is the time of uh, people stealing records, Napster, and all that, and LimeWire. So if that wasn't around, we would have definitely had a platinum record. So, but I've stole so many music, like so much music off that stuff. So I, I'm okay with it. I, I'm paying my dues <laughs> back with that. So, uh, yeah, I worked at a, a web, like we had a, a really crazy T1 ethernet connection back in the like early or in late nineties. So I, I had access to, I could download an album and, like, two minutes. Yeah. So I, uh, that was not the case for most people. So I stole literally thousands. I probably shouldn't say this loud. Uh, but yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I probably got a lot of records from that. So I, I I'm paying my dues by uh, giving back to shame, uh, shame. Uh, no, shame, no, no, yeah. shame. <laughs> <laughs> I, at the time you're just like, I can do this. And then you're like, Whoa, wait a minute. I'm actually affecting people's, you know, but bottom then, line. Yeah. But let's talk about this also though. How many bands would not have made it 
if that wasn't around? How many bands you've not have heard? Of? I've I've like found oh, out the, so the old the old exposure argument. There for you go. Okay, yeah, I see, I see. But that's true. <laughs> that's true for this because I actually got into so many bands that I didn't even know existed, and I went to their shows and bought the shirts and became lifelong fans. So. Uh, so it's interesting to see how how it's it's morphed into Spotify now, and like you can discover new music on Spotify, and you, you know, I, I wonder how that correlates to the bottom line for the artist. Like if if I pull up a a song now and I listen to it on Spotify, do they get money for that? I mean, they do, and it's very very small because I get checks. Yeah. I get I still get checks from the band. It's very small, but like I, I can see where everything's coming from, and a lot of it's streaming, and uh, uh, because everything's streaming now, whereas before everything was CD sales. So everything was based on CD sales when we were doing it, everything. So now that, so technology, again, technology kind of taking away from, you know, um, from artists in, in that way, but Hey, it is what it is. I mean, I, without it, I, I mean, we had fans that came up to us and that were like, Hey man, I, I found you on Napster and I'd listen to the same cause we would label our music as like it would say, you know, well, we were a different name then, but it would say we're called 41 Down then. So 41 Down slash like corn, disturbed, whatever. And then folks would find it that way and folks would come to our shows. And actually, I've, I had uh, another another big famous band come up and say, you guys wrote this song called Hover that was labeled our song on Napster. And people would come up to them and ask, ask them if they wrote that song, but it was our song. So, I mean, you know. That that's crazy, just how it works. But uh, but anyway, so yeah, let's get back to um to you. I mean, this is about you, man, not about me. No, uh, no, it's it's nah, more interesting to hear about your Napster days nah. as, a, as a pirate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, if FBI is listening or if they're still doing that, uh, <laughs> that wasn't me. It was my friend who did it, and I just kind of borrowed his CDs. Um, so yeah, let's talk about how you went from like this. Uh, you know, testing into your garage and you post it on YouTube and that's just how you start. And then you just kept doing videos like this and like over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you see the, did you have foresight to say, this is a thing? Like I'm, this is like, or was it just like me? It's like a hobby and kind of worked out to be. Y- yes and no. So, okay. so it started off. So after I, I posted that first video of how to light a bonfire with rockets, that was the first video I put on YouTube. And I, I sent it to my friends and I realized people were just, finding it naturally i was like oh this is interesting i could use this medium this new medium that is internet video to teach the things that i'm learning and so that's what i started doing i started making videos about what was interesting to me and then i I realized pretty quick like this could be a thing and in the shower actually uh i was i still remember shampooing my, my my hair strawberry shampoo suave strawberry shampoo and i can smell it I, yeah, everybody can smell it. I can smell it too. And so I was straw- I was shampooing my hair and my wife was, you know, brushing her teeth at the sink and I just yelled through the shower curtain. I said, hey baby, I, I think I figured it out. She's like, what? I, I said, all of it. And, and she's like, she's like, what do you, what do you mean? And I said, this YouTube thing, I think we can pay for the kids' college education with this YouTube thing. And she said, how? And I said, I don't know. I have no idea, but I think it'll work. And she's like, that's nice, honey, brushing her teeth, you know? And um, just kept, and then I just I just realized, I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something here. That's amazing. But but there's something, there's something that worries me about that because it makes me realize, like, at some point, I decided to take a camera and like pointed at my face. And that's, that kind of scares me a little bit. Like, why did I think that I should be able to point the camera at my face and share it with people? Like, is there something like, is there some element of vanity there that I don't understand? You know, that that's a thing that concerned me, you know, thinking back is like, you know, why did I think that was okay? Because it's, I, I think of these things very differently now than the way I did. Right. Right. But it's is super interesting though, the whole well, time. Well, think about it. Like your motivation wasn't look at me, Destin. Your motivation was like, Hey, I've I've doing some cool things here I want to share with you. I think that's much <laughs> different than than we- hey, hey, look at me. I'm you know, uh, you know, you're not on camera, just spit you don't come across as like 
a very arrogant or egotistical driven person, you're like, Hey, this is, and, and that's why I like your channel so much is it's not, Hey, look at me, look at me. It's like, Hey, I found this thing out and I want to share with you. And that's, that's the difference. Because if you came across very like egotistical driven, it's about you. It's not about you. It's about these things that you are discovering, which gives the viewer access to really cool things that they normally wouldn't have access to. And I think that's the difference. Yeah. And that it's also about the people, like whether right. you realize it or not, the video that I did on Indy was about you as and, much as, and, and as much cool as it was folks. and all the cool folks that work there, you know, it right. was about you guys as much as it was about the film. Right. I mean, when you, you know, I turned the camera to you the first time is a bit, he's really big into magic. Well, was big into magic. And, I'm watching him doing these car tricks and, and when you're bored sitting on a bus for 12 hours, you have to do something and we don't drink uh, hardly or do we don't do, we don't do anything else. We're just kind of boring dudes. And so he's doing magic tricks and he's like, Hey, we're going to this town as a, a famous magic shop. We can go. And the guy at the counter was, I bought some car trick and he gave me my change back. And when he did, he did that trick and it blew my mind that he could do it with like a handful of change. And then he showed me the trick. He's like, oh, it's just sleight of hand. So I've literally been doing that trick for like 12, 15 years. It's, like, your, it's your one longer trick. Longer than that. Like 20. It's the only one I got that I do constantly because I do it to my kids. And now they're like, I've seen it, you know. It's so good. It's just funny. and uh, and But yeah, yeah. The channel is about the people for sure. Um, but you kind of do it in a way that's not like how we're talking. I'm just talking to you. It's like you're doing it through the means of like a purpose or a passion. And that's really awesome. I mean, I, I love the baseball bat one where you, you hit the longest home run with the, uh, yeah. With, Jeremy, Jeremy, that was amazing. Building and I were, yeah. Yeah. That was and amazing. I like how you showed, I think one of my favorite parts is sh that you showed it breaking and you showed it like not going so well. And then you, you, then you repaired it and then you did it. It's like, it shows even younger people and folks like me, like, Hey, it's not going to go perfect every time you're going to, you got to figure it out. You have to fail to get to that next level. Um, so is, is that, is that true with indie? Like you didn't just say, I'm going to start a film development lab and just go. Did, did it, how did it start? Did it you was fail? Kind of similar to what? Oh yeah, for sure. It's kind of similar to what, um, what you said you did with YouTube. Um, you know, I, I would send my film off and get it back. And I, I would say to myself, I want to know that why they made the decisions they made on this color or why they made the decisions they made. And I would call them and they'd say, well, you know, we can change it. And I was like, I need to know more. I don't need to just put it in a black box, send it back. And then it looks the way it does. I need to know more. I need to know what technology it is. I don't know what the scanner is. And so I just wanted to know more, just like, just like you, you're like, I wanted to do that. So Basically, I was on a Facebook group, uh, which was all film shooters, and a, uh, a guy came on and was like, I can get these scanners, so I bought one, and I was just scanning my own film. I would go to like CVS and just have them process it, and I would scan it, just 35, just to, just to kind of get used to the scanner. Mm -hmm. And it was the Frontier scanner, but it wasn't the SP3000, it was a 2500, which actually caught fire in our studio, um, <laughs> which was kind of scary. I was like, well, if this is how it's going to go. This is going to be a long road. But I, but I called them and they said, you actually got an older model, get the newer model and it won't do that. And I was like, well, why didn't you tell me that the first time? But anyway, so I, I would get the film and I would scan it and I would say, oh, this is how it works. And I kind of revealed, like demystified the whole scanning process. And I was like, oh, okay. If this is how it works, then uh, let me post a few of my images online. And, um, and this was uh, a decade ago. And I remember uh, this girl, uh, this awesome photographer, Marta, who uh, is, um, I just reached out to literally two weeks ago. And I said, hey, you were one of the first people to send film to me ever before we were ever open. And thank you because it's been a decade. And, and I just want to say thank you for that. And I always remember your name because you were the very first one. And she was like, oh, I totally remember you. Yeah, I've been following you and all this, blah, blah, blah. So we be kind of kind of reconnected uh, over that, but uh, I, I sent her film back, and she's like, "Oh yeah, this is fine. It could use this and this and this." And and then uh, I just kept posting in the group, and you would say it was kind of standard to post your photo and say, uh, "This camera, this lens, this 
film in this lab. And so the lab, I would just say scanned by me. And people were like, wait a minute, what scanned by you? How are you doing that? And folks were like, hey, I live closer to you than my lab. Can I send it to you? And we're not even open at this point. I'm just like saying, hey, if you want to send me some film, I'll do it. And they were like, can you scan mine? And I was like, well, let me let me just see. And so that's kind of how it started. And then I remember one day that we launched, which was February 12th, 2000, uh, sorry, February 12th, 2012. So next year it'll be officially a decade. Um, 2012, 2012. I, 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 I'm pretty sure that was the date. And then I remember uh, walking in one day and it was literally me and Alan. Alan uh, works for Leica now, but he was like the first guy to ever work at the lab. And it was me and him. And uh, I walked in one day after we had launched and I saw boxes, like 20 boxes stacked to the ceiling. And sometimes UPS would just leave it there instead of like for the neighboring business because they were closed or whatever. And they're like, can we just leave it here and they'll pick it up? And I thought that's what it was. And he goes, this is all for us. And I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be like this. So that's kind of how it started. But um, I'm a lot that's like awesome. you. Yeah, I'm a lot like you where I'm like, I want to figure it out. I want to, I mean, much different. I'm not a completely different level or skate, but when I'm interested in something, I want to take it apart and figure out how it works. That but, curiosity. So, yeah. so the, so the heartbeat of indie film lab is curiosity. Absolutely. And, and I mean, I mean, not to the, not to the realm of like rockets and space and what you're, I mean, you do that in a completely different manner, but like, you know, for bass guitars, I'm going to take it apart, see how it works for, um, uh, you know, scanners. I'm going to find out what it's definitely not like overnight, you know, it was, it took many years to fail. And when I, what I mean by fail is like, I didn't go in saying, let's have processes. Let's have this backend software. Let's have all this stuff. Let's have all the stuff. It was like, no, no, no. Let's get the film in. Let's process it. Let's scan it. Let's just do a really, really good job. The best we can. Let's get the best customer service we can. And, uh, and then we'll figure it out, you know, cause I didn't, I didn't know what we were going to be. I didn't know if we we're going to be like a wedding or like a creative kind of, and so what we turned into is totally organic, which I kind of hate that word because it's been overused, but it's really an organic growth of like, I don't know what indie's going to be. It's just going to be what it's going to be. Well, well t- tell me, th- tell me this after we dropped the video, um, did you get a lot of new people sending you film? We did. Yeah, we sure did. And it was really cool. Um, to see how many people had films stocked up, ready to go. Because as soon as you launched the video, I, we just got an influx of a film that folks had already shot, didn't know what to do with it, or didn't want to process it themselves or whatever. So, did, was, did that did that taper off after the initial influx? It, it did, but I feel like it's coming back. Like folks are like, oh, they've got their camera now, or they've got their film, or they kind of found their camera in the closet again, dug it out. So, uh, yeah, I feel like took it's... took the time to shoot that roll of film. Right. Yeah. And learn about it a little bit more, but we're getting like our email really exploded, like with questions and things like that. And that's what sparked us doing this kind of YouTube kind of deal, uh, just so that we can answer questions. And like Thursday, I'm doing a, a live where I shoot a roll of medium format film, uh, with a model, uh, and it's going to be really fun and talk about metering and talk about like show me actually shooting the role, loading the role and all that because we have so many people asking questions like I'm new to film. What should I do? Blah, blah, blah. So I want to help and answer those questions. So that's what kind of sparks this whole thing. Hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, we're excited to do that Thursday and excited to keep this going and talk to people. And, and, and you're so great because what, which brings me to this next whole section is, is you're so like, I've seen so many of your videos and it's all about like, advancing the human race, like technology and like what you can push the limits of and what you can learn and what you can get out of all this. And with digital technology advancing the way it is, like, I mean, you can now get a medium format camera, like digital camera for like $5,000, right? I mean, that didn't happen five years ago. Like Fuji just released a hundred megapixel medium format camera wow like this year or last year and it's gorgeous it's huge but it's still digital it's just a big file uh with a little it has different depth of course because of the sensors gigantic 
But with, with with saying that, like as far as digital has come and how far it's going, and I, I can definitely see, you know, this like the advancing is happening. The advancement's happening so fast. And for a guy like you that likes technology and likes that, why why pick a medium that slower takes more time? You got to send it to a lab. You got to wait. You got to be patient. You got to buy the film. Tell me why, more about that. Why why film? Yeah, man. Let's talk. Let's talk about why you're so. You know, you're so I, into. Well, I mean, just like I don't know. It's it's the feels is what it is. Listen to this. <laughs> I mean, there's something about the noise mm -hmm. of taking a film photo. That's cool. I, I just took a picture of you. Nice. There's something about the feel of that. I mean, it it's it's very tactile, and you can. I mean, there's actually a chemical process going on. And then when you get the photos, they they look different. They look very different. And um, for me, there's a there's a mic microscope across the across the room there. When I when I zoom in really really close, I can see the individual grains in the in the film. And to me, it's that imperfection of the shot. Like if you look at a digital shot, everything is like crisp lines. Everything's just sharp and perfect. Right life's not perfect. <laughs> and, and I, for me, I, I, I enjoy the imperfections and I enjoy that, that it's not, it's not exactly right. And focus might be a little bit off, you know, I'm, something so about how does that, that work me. with your background in like engineering and where, where it has to be perfect. Is that, is that one of the main reasons it's like, this doesn't have to be perfect and it's still beautiful. Whereas like your background is has well, to there, be perfect for it to work. I mean, I don't think people have to be like these monolithic right, right, things, right. but but like I, there's this art side to to me, and there's this right. science and technology, engineering, math side to me. You've heard of STEAM, science, right. technology, yes. engineering, arts. You know, they they put the arts in I there. Got you. Math. Okay. I've always wondered yeah. why they why they cram arts in there because it seems like it's a separate thing. But I, I don't know. I think it's okay to. Um, to just like, hey, this is the this is the me time. This is the artistic side of me, and, and that's what film really does for me. The other thing is with a digital camera. Yes, I can capture. Like I could literally set a laser scanner up in this room, hit a button, and capture everything about this room. The you know you can use lidar to go. You know you get the. There, it's complicated, but you, you can get a three D scan of the entire room with color information on each pixel and recreate the room. But there's something cold and callous about that to me. You know, just because you can doesn't mean that's the way you should. And so, for example, my my daughter, she likes horses and her and her friends were at a horse show recently and I took a digital camera and I took some what what the moms tell me are great photos. You know, I took a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of photos of all these girls on horses, but I wasn't there. Like mentally, I was not even there because I was just snap, 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 snap. You know, lighting uh, exposure up, down, snap, 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 snap. When, when I do this with uh, this is my primary SLR I shoot with. It's a it's a five QD. It's a it's an old Canon SLR. Basically, I just went to Wikipedia, and you know, most of my lenses are are Canon, and so I went to Wikipedia and said, okay, well, what thirty five millimeter SLRs did Canon make? And I just went to the far right of the chart and I was like, okay, that's the latest model they made. So it probably has the best autofocus technology. And, but you still get, you know, the, I don't know what the word is. You, you still get the limitations in some cases and the beauty of film. And so I ended up with this one. And the, the fun thing about this is the, the quartz date on it only goes up to 2020. And so you take the battery out and so it won't leave the date on in there anymore. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I did. And when I take this to a horse show, you get 36 shots on that roll and that's it. And so you can be, you can they be present. Make a, let, we're going to talk about gear now. Let, so keep that out. I want to tell you there, there's another camera that is probably a later one. Yeah. Yeah. The one V have you heard of that one? I've heard of it. Yeah. I had, that camera twice it's amazing is it yeah it's really really amazing so our canner our printer just went nuts over here <laughs> can you hear that it's like it's not a big deal yeah I I mean, it's, it. agi it's agitating the the ink right now uh 
That's awesome. Uh, so uh, the 1V is a crazy cool camera because it's very similar to a 5D. It's like their pro model. It's yeah. like the, the latest and greatest that they made. And it's like phenomenal. Uh, it's only it's only like five or six hundred bucks too. Um, so that's a really great camera that you can you can. So so what cameras do you shoot with besides that one? Do you have some point and shoots or did you have a Nikon? yeah yeah? This is the Nikon. Um, I got this because my buddy Trent. He's like, hey, if you want to point and shoot, this is like the holy of holies. And so right. I got it mainly because of the uh, the dials on the top. Isn't that gorgeous? It's beautiful. Yeah, like the camera itself is a work of art. It is. I've heard. I've heard of the contacts. Um, what is it? The is it called T, the T2, 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 T3? Yeah, yeah. I've heard of that one. I would like to try that. I don't know. Uh, the uh, Fuji Class A is another famous one. Really? Yeah, Fuji Class A. Um, that's a really kind of famous one. Leica made a few that's kind of popular. Um, but I've seen that one a bunch, and I kind of wanted to buy it just because of those dials. Those dials are just... It yeah. makes me... I, I feel like I'm doing something when I when I turned that, you know what I mean? It, absolutely. Well, one problem though, is I don't understand the autofocus. You can either do like a single spot in the center or you can do a matrix autofocus. Okay. And it's, it's kind of difficult in the menus to go turn it one way or the other. And so I've had it in the matrix form. I missed a couple of focuses on the shots I took. And so I flipped it over to center and so I'm about to send you some rolls of film okay. to develop <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to learn which way I really want it. So uh, can, with the, with the middle, could you focus on their eye and re, reposition or yeah. Okay. Yeah. H half press focus reposition. That's what, that's how I've shot digital for ever. I've never really let the camera choose because every time I do, it doesn't choose what I want it to choose. So, right. That might be a good, it might be better that way. Um, what do you shoot you, digital? Do you shoot digital? I do. I shoot a Sony, uh, a seven, mm -hmm. the very first a seven. Cause it's the very, it's a very small body, but it's still full frame. But um, you, for film, you shoot the Hasselblad H1, right? I did. I did, but I sold those about, I don't know, a few years ago. I really like those cameras, but there was like, it's a little too much. It's like, it's a huge setup, but the images were, were beautiful. Um, so I sold that and I bought the Fuji GF670, which is a 6x7 com compactable camera. It's a travel camera. It compacts into a very small frame, and then you like pop the top of it off and like pull it out and I sold it and I feel very, I hate that I sold it because it was a killer camera. 3.5 lens, Fuji lens is the sharpest lens I've ever shot on any film camera to date. Um, F F 3.5, 3.5. And it's, but on medium format, that's more like 2.2. Really? So like, yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, and it's six, seven and you can make it six, six. You can like turn a knob in the back and make it six, six. So you get, more frame you get 12 frames on a roll instead of 10 so look wow. it up it's a really cool camera it's super sharp and it's very it like it, it's about this big let me see where's the camera it's about this big and that thin so it's so a really one, cool camera so one thing that appeals to me about film cameras is the engineering that goes into it there's a tremendous amount of like for example this is a, a minolta that uh, a buddy of mine let me borrow. He, he used to be a wedding photographer. And just the way these things are engineered, I love it. I mean, you have to make a, a light proof box and then you have to let the light in for a very short amount of time. You know, a camera is that way as well, just a digital camera. But there's something about the film. It's like this, uh, it's like we're going to protect this this film and it's sacred. And how do we get it from here to there? Like when you have a, uh, here's some Portra, Portra 800. So I don't know. It's something about like the whole design of the whole thing is about protecting what's on that film. Right. And that's Which is really cool. I mean, it, it's probably nothing to you. You probably, I mean, like you understand this is like, it's just film to you. No, no, but, no, no, uh, no, no, no. I honestly, like if you would have tell, if you like, I don't know how to explain this, but like, I still don't understand fully like how they, someone made that like back yeah. in the day. I'm not talking about now. I'm not talking about with the machines we have now. I like, if you had told me like when, um, the first guy, what Talbot, what's his name? Uh, he made the first like film shot ever. Like if you, if I was there in 18, whatever it was, I don't even know. That's pretty bad. 
And I'm saying there, he's like, oh, so I made this thing light sensitive and I capture the light and then I can, I would be like, they're going to burn you. You're a witch. <laughs> they're going to burn you <laughs> if you show people this. Like, it, it, you know, it, it'd be like telling me now, like, hey, if we had a, uh, a telescope that could see billions and billions of light years away and you can catch the reflection from the earth, you'd see dinosaurs. I'd be like, what are you talking about? You know, it just like blows my mind that that's still a thing. I do not take that for granted. Like I still, every time I load a film, I'm like this is insane to me. Like it's really insane. And digital is even more like, I, I don't even understand that technology at all. Like I don't get that at all. I can, I, I can grasp the film now that like I get what it does, but it's still to me, like every time I get a rollback, I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> like I, I still I, feel that way. I understand digital pretty well i think have you ever heard of a bayer filter wow yes i do know that that's the rgb right that's the, the yeah, yeah 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 so all all digital cameras are black and white and you just filter certain colors out and and it's just light sensitive you know elements semiconductor elements in there it's it's interesting but it's just a you know how small can you make everything and how how small of a package can you get it into something about film is I don't know. It's, it's just magical. It's more, it's feels like magic. It, it, it is. I mean, knowing what it does and all that, but, uh, have you ever shot medium format film? No, I have not. Okay. We gotta, I'm going to, I'm going to have to package something up and send to you because it's a, it's a, it's a whole new world. Like without singing the song, it, it's a, it's definitely whole a whole new, new world. world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it, I remember, um, shooting 35 and then getting the RZ 67 and like, mm -hmm getting the rollback and they were horrible scans uh from like this is the local lab a long time ago and i remember thinking oh that's how those images are shot online that i like like i go online i'm like what's this shot on what's this shot on and most of them were the rz67 which is a really huge camera it's not mamiya yeah mamiya yeah that's the, the camera we're going to shoot thursday so um they can people can see me shoot that and it's very awkward to hold and it's heavy it's like 10 pounds with all the stuff on it and you can hurt your wrist. I've hurt my wrist so many times carrying that camera. Um, and it's a waist level finder. Everything's backwards, which you can put a, a, a prism on it, but it has a, it's backwards on the waist level. So you're kind of like finding your way. You can get a little seasick trying to do it. So it's not a very, it's a very interesting camera to shoot. It's not a very practical, like for a first time film shooter, but uh, I bought it. And I, I, when I got the scans back, I go, I, it, I was like, whoa, it's like, 35 on steroids it's like still the feel still the grain but it's like the sharpness and the this the overall quality is insane uh so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to experience that pretty soon yeah, i feel like I, I would love to do that there's a there's another shot that i'm thinking of specifically it was made by a guy named dr david no dr andrew david hazy that's his name and it's a shot of a bullet a subsonic bullet and you get the shock wave on the front of it. And he shot it on a large piece of film. Um, okay. I want to say a gigantic piece of film. Like 8 by 10? Something like that. Don't know how he did it. But he, he did it in the same method. I don't know how he actually captured the light on the 8 by 10 film. But he did it very similar to how Dr. Dr. Edgerton did it. And I want to recreate that. I want to do that like scientific photography. I want to recreate the things they did. That would be amazing. And yeah. I think that's something I'm going to do. So, well I'm now like with, uh, no, I say now, but with eight by 10 and four by five camera setups, like they're so like, I wouldn't say more advanced than they were. Cause I don't even know what he shot that on, but there's some high end gear that you can buy. That's not crazy expensive. And it's like insane. I mean that four by five shot of Thomas on the back of the thing. I mean, I could literally blow it up the size of this wall and it would be gorgeous. You know what I mean? Like yeah. You see the grain and the, the the feel to it, but, and that lens was kind of crappy compared to what you, you can get. I mean, you can, you can do that. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you could do that. that. That's what I like about film is you can get on eBay and you can find old gear like this. I, I picked up this SLR here in town for like 50 bucks. Right. And the, I mean, the lady was like, I mean, it's just got a kit lens on it. You know, it's it's simple, but it does what it needs to do. Right. And it's really nice. So you were talking about shooting your uh, daughter's horse uh, experience. 
How how does thirty six shots make you like you were saying you were just blasting away digital like when you yeah. load a roll of film? Well, how does I, that make you feel? I've like? actually I've actually got one of the photos here. Oh yeah, let's pull it up. Can you see that? So this is Jake. This is the horse that. Can you see this? I don't know if you can see the the. Yes. So so this is the the horse that my daughter. Um, we, we've, we've borrowed this horse. The, the lady that owns it has gone to college. And so we're feeding the horse and in exchange, we get, my daughter gets to ride it. And so there's something about this photo. It's just a simple photo, but I don't know. It, it just has a lot of character to it. And so I, I drove the horse down to Tuscaloosa and I was like, oh man, okay, we made it. I, I just want to document that I got the horse here before we get it off the trailer and just took a, a just a real quick photo of the horse and i love it it's just simple i like the photo i don't know if i have uh let's see if i have other yeah my wife took this photo after my daughter rode jake for a couple of days in the thing and you know you just we've got that and that and we have a couple more in between that i'm not sharing here but but you just think a little bit more about the photos that you want to take and you just do it. And um, it allows you to be present more, I think personally. And so it's just really cool. I really enjoy that. I don't know why. And um, I also like the way the color works out here. You know, her face and her hair is a little bit fuzzy. It's not perfect. You know, the, the, the focus isn't tack sharp, but uh, it's enjoyable. Yeah. I like that stuff. I get, I get more photos here. Do you want to see some more photos? Let's do it. I don't know what they and you are. You can tell us, you can tell us why, like why film over the digital, like while we look at these, because to me, it it uh, it's a huge. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Just like how you're saying, you don't know how to explain. It. Oh, I love that. Sh yeah, there, there's a yeah. shot that you have coming up. That's I yeah. just love that. This, and, and, and not this, saying you could not take that on digital. It's that when you when you go to shoot these these things, like for me, it's like I can like with digital let's say I shoot a hundred shots, right? Yeah. Or 500 shots. I got to go back and pick the moments where with film, I feel like, I mean, I still have to do that, but with film, I feel like I hit those more. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know why. Like this is a buddy of mine. His name's David and he's an engineer here locally. We spend a lot of time together and he's a, he's like one of these people in your life that brings you deep wisdom. Right. But he's a man of few words. And so he was in a parking lot and I had a camera. I was like, Hey David, he's like, what? It's like, I'm going to take your picture. And that's always a weird moment for people. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then you take the picture and you just capture like the essence of who the person is. And, uh, especially if you say, this is film, Hey, this is film. I'm going to take your picture on film. And they're like, Oh, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, uh, I don't know that me and a couple people, it's, it's hard to explain why these pictures means so much i think that you know the personality comes through this is my my spunky little daughter and uh she wanted we were on a, a hiking trail and she wanted some water and there was a little water cooler and i was like i oh, gotta been down there we're gonna open the spigot and she's like what it's like this is how it works you know and uh tara grabbed her neck and put her down there and you know i'm, I'm holding the spigot or tara's holding the spigot i don't know it's just there's just so much life in it new new puppy um you've done the christmas lights with the bokeh thing Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So, times. yeah. So that's, that's fun. This is I a love shot. That photo. Love this one. Yeah. This is a shot I took in uh, new Orleans and it's, it's not out of focus as much as it is fuzzy because it's shot through a, a window. And this was an art gallery in new Orleans, just off of bourbon street, walking around new Orleans and, uh, it was just, I was like, man, this, this kind of captures the feel of new Orleans right here. It's like old, you know, really old architecture and you got all the new craziness going on. I, I just, I just really like the shot. This shot right here. Um, one of the, um, <laughs> I love this. This is a, a, a young boy. He's the son of a friend of mine and my friend does a really good job of parenting and, um, he makes, he's like, Hey, this is what we're having for dinner. And this is what, this is dinner. You eat it. And if you don't eat it, they put it in the fridge and you get it for breakfast the next morning. Oh my gosh. And so what you're seeing right here is the thousand yard stare of this, <laughs> this kid 
that is eating his breakfast that's Spanish rice. <laughs> and, and he's he's accepted his fate and he's like he's like I get it. I know. And yeah, you could totally do this with digital. You could totally do this kind of thing with digital. But it you it, with the exception of this little this little water jug right here, you could not tell me what year that thing was taken. Right. Because uh, film feels timeless. I think this is all Portra 400 is how I did that. Especially with the plate, like the plate design. I was like, this could yeah. be 70s, man. This could be 80s. Nobody this knows. Looks, nobody knows. <laughs> I know. It's it's really, really awesome. I, and I like that as well. Like you feel nostalgic. Um, some people like react. Yeah, some people reacted to the video that we did together. And they're like, hey, I, I, I don't feel the feeling that you're talking about with film. And I get that. I get that. I was like, oh, it's just a photo, whatever. But um, for me, it, it just feels completely different. It's a buddy of mine owns a uh, he owns a tractor junkyard, and he parts out old tractors. And so this, I mean, what year was that photo taken? No idea, right? If it was razor sharp on the edges, if everything was just tack sharp, and, and I think that's. That's part of it. That's I, I spoke with a guy from Kodak that, that you put me in touch with, and I was trying to understand what it was. And he said, well, the thing about a, a CCD or a CMOS sensor is like all the pixels are laid out in a grid. And so lines are super sharp. You know, everything just pops, stands out. But with film, it's not that way. The, the grid of the film is random and different sizes all that stuff. And so and the layers. Yeah. Yeah. The layers are a big part of it, aren't they? Yeah. Be because you get this, you get this one layer that is a certain sensitivity, another layer that's a different sensitivity and they kind of add up to give you a higher dynamic range. Another thing about film this is my buddy, Jeremy, Jeremy Fielding, like the dynamic range of that shot's incredible. I think. Oh, uh, film has so much and so much more than we can even get in the scanner i mean we can we can pull out a lot but we're doing a snapshot of what is actually in there um uh you can you can pull out way more than you think uh and the highlight retention is literally insane insane um, you can, compared to digital yeah I, I guess you could do an hdr like a high dynamic range scan couldn't you yeah we could scan it multiple times at different you know different you know exposures and put them together but it's uh, it's pretty fascinating what the scanners can do. But knowing what the film actually is capable of is is really 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 cool. Oh yeah, uh, it never gets old to me. It never gets old knowing how much. And, and that brings me back to the point, like when we when you're shooting and you're shooting film and you have 36 shots, or when you're medium format and you have 10 or 15, how does that make you shoot differently? Like we talked about it, but like. How does that make you feel like when you're about to, to, to pull that trigger or shoot, not pull the trigger, but yeah, you know, when you're about to, that's what know, I call it. Yeah. I know. So, so, snap the shot. so in this, in this shot right here, for example, this was my daughter's dance recital, my little daughter. And so the big girls were coming out to dance. Right. And you know, they know what they're doing and they're really fast and they're moving all over the place, but they started doing this ribbon dance. And I was like, man, this is, beautiful like what they're doing on stage is beautiful and i took i, I had a a, a canon a, a 70d and i had this 5qd this this 35 millimeter 5qd and i shot and i shot and i shot with a digital and I, I was like i'm gonna give myself three shots with the film the film camera and this is my favorite photo that came out of all of it you know i i tried to I tried to get it where I would capture the movement. So you want to set your, you know, your shutter speed to a certain, you know, one, one fortieth, one, one over 40, one over 60, something like that. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was just my favorite shot. So and you only took how many on film? Three, three two or yeah. so. Yeah. Three or so. Yeah, right. And so and I don't this really shot remember. is incredible. I love this shot. There's motion. Uh, and so how, how do you feel when you, when you shoot the shot, and you have no idea what you got and you get it back and it's that shot. Yeah, it's insane. So, so this one right here, um, this is at peach park in Alabama and Clinton. Yeah. yeah, Clanton, Alabama. So, uh, you, you know, when you're driving up the road, you stop, you get ice cream and you let the kids play on the, the playground. That's what you do. 
I have a shot like this that I took with a digital camera of my older daughter. And I, I took the, sh the photo with a, it was an old Canon T2i digital camera. I took like 20 photos till I got the one. And with this one on film, I was like, all right, I got one shot. Let's hope I, let's hope I get the focus right. So I just kind of practice, practice. Okay, here we go. Snap. And I was like, I want movement on the swing. That's what I want. Let's see how it works. And then when, so you feel risk. And so when this thing was in the film canister, when it was in the mail going to you guys, had no idea what was going to happen. And then when it came back and it looked like that, and it, it, it captures the, you know, the essence of my daughter and, and like the messy hair, the energy, like the childhood wonder, like all that stuff, daddy, you know, I'm only holding on with one hand here, everything. Right. You're like, man, what a gift. So you know? what, do you, what do you say to people who say, um, oh, I can do that in digital with uh, presets and all that. What do you, what, what do you say to that? I say, that's awesome. Have, have fun. <laughs> that's great. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really like to be for things and not against things. There you go. You and be positive, not negative about it. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, I just see added value through the experience of shooting film. Um, I feel like w one thing that was interesting. Um, have you ever seen these shots of a bird that comes down and tries to like, go right in the water and get a fish or something. Have you ever seen these shots? Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like they're just amazing razor sharp kingfisher coming down, like beak touching the water. It's oh, incredible. Yeah. So I sat on the beach one day with a digital camera and with a film camera. And I just shot and shot and shot with a digital camera, tried to get it, tried to get it, tried to get it. Couldn't do it. I was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do a rare thing. And I'm going to treat a film camera like a digital camera. And I'm going to blow through 36 shots trying to get these birds. I just did, I, I did it. I got pretty close, Yeah. but the experience was totally different. Right. So what that told me through that test that I ran on myself was that it has something to do with the, um, uh, I don't know. It's like the moderation. It's, it's something to do about the self-discipline involved with how I use a film camera. The so there's forced, the force discipline there's yeah. Like you, you, yeah, it's forced. So, so I think that that might be it. It's, it's, it's like I have, um, when I'm shooting with digital, I'm just drunk with data. Da, 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 da. Well, but, there's no but, parameters. Like, uh, if I, you know, uh, my friend Ryan and his, in his talk, um, that he does at workshops, he comes to a section where he talks about limitation and what limitation creates, uh, creativity. If, yeah. I gave, if I gave you a 50 millimeter lens and a Nikon camera and said, hey, man, you have two shots and your goal is to take a picture of something blue. I'm giving you specific parameters to go by. And with film, it's like, yeah, yeah, people can say all day, I can do that in digital. And it's like, high five, dude, absolutely. But where I get really creative is when I look down at my camera and I look at, I look at, let's say it's a wedding, right? I look down at my camera. I have seven shots left and they're about to go to the ceremony. And there's this beautiful window light right here. I go, I have seven shots. I better make this amazing because I don't want to load another roll. That's not going to work for the ceremony as far as the speed film or whatever. So I want to make sure that these seven shots are going to be amazing because every shot counts. So it gives me parameters. It gives me... Uh, a limitation that makes my brain say, make it work instead of, oh, you with digital, I might say, oh, might not even need to take that shot or I can shoot 700 of that same thing and I got to go weed through it later on Lightroom. So I feel like it's the limitations of that that make you think differently before you shoot. I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. I, th I think... I think for me personally, sometimes when I think I am the most free and, and I get to do whatever I want, that, that, that can kind of enslave me in a weird way. So, so I don't know, that sounded really strange, <laughs> but sometimes you can be paralyzed by the ability or not paralyzed. Sometimes you can just say, well, I can do whatever I want and nothing matters. And I end up like at the, at the horse show, just shooting, shooting, shooting. 
and I totally became focused on how many shots can I take? And it, it completely destroyed the experience for me. But that limitation of a film camera at the other horse show, you know, that, that gave me parameters and guidelines. And because of that, I both got to experience the moment and capture it in a really meaningful way. And I was there, I was present for my children. Being present's huge and life in general. And you were so correct, man. Like if I have a digital camera and I go to my, whatever my kids thing, I mean, I shoot a lot of my kids on film. So when I go to their sporting events or just any, any activity, or if I'm just around the house and I have a digital camera, it's like, I'm, I'm in, I'm in work mode. I'm in click, 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 click. And, and other people can say, Oh, well you don't have to shoot as much. And I'm like, but that's, that's, I have to be forced. I have to be forced to do that. Or I will, I love taking pictures. So I'll just shoot as many, as many, as many. And I'll, I'll say this too. Um, when I get the shot back on film that I, I have to know in my head how it's going to look. And I have to capture that when I get it back, the respect I have for that shot or, you know, the, uh, the importance I felt or like the, I did this kind of feeling is there like with digital i shoot i go oh that's not good let me fix that oh i shot that's not good let me fix that with film i go i did it i I feel like i accomplished without the camera saying good job it's like you know the camera doesn't say anything back to you the camera's just like hey what do you want me to do you had 36 opportunities to catch something good you gonna make it happen not the camera's not telling me oh good job man good lighting or good shot I feel like digital photography has prepared me for film because I understand, you know, aperture, shutter speed, ISO in a, in a really good way now. And I feel like I, I understand film feels different because you just peg ISO. You can't change it. You peg it in the film that you, you know, depending on what, you know, what type of film that you load. Right. And, and it's like, okay, this is what I, I can, I've got aperture, I've got shutter speed. I can work with these and see what I get. And so, right. Yeah, I, I agree totally. I, th- I think, I don't know. So you just held up some film right there. Is this some new film you're going to try out? What do you got there? I saw, Cin- I may have seen CineStill in there. Yes, I did. Yes, I've never shot CineStill. CineStill? CineStill, yeah. CineStill. Okay, so um, I've never shot, maybe I fired a, a, a roll of Portra 800. So Portra 400 is kind of my go-to. Right. Um, I bought some infrared. That's going to um, be fun. Yeah, I've never done that. So I would like to figure out. I almost shot some fireflies on infrared the other night. It didn't work out. Um, and then CineStill. This is something I don't understand a lot about. My, my understanding is they take old movie film and they remove some type of coating from the film. Is that true? That is true. So those are two friends of mine. Uh, the the Brothers Wright is what they're called. Brandon and Brian Wright. Um out in California, uh, good friends of ours started this company um, because they wanted a tungsten balance film, which they have a daylight balance film. So yeah, they, yeah, the, this is the, daylight. Blue is daylight, right? Red is tungsten. Yeah, yeah. So they have a tungsten um, balance film, and so what they did in their little workshop in LA, they removed the rim jet. It's called. So the rim jet is on movie film. Uh, so when you shoot it, the light goes through the film and it hits the anti-halation layer, which absorbs the light. So it doesn't bounce back. Like you talk about in your video. Uh, so in movie film, the processing is ENC two, which is a different process. It goes through a completely different process than what you saw here. And there's a, like a high pressure sprayer that sprays that jet off. So it cleans it off before it processes it or in the processing, um, uh, developing uh, time or whatever. So what they've done is taken that off so that you can develop it in C41 uh, chemistry. So it is a C41. Uh, it's a C41, capable, but it's, but it's well, got, a, it's, it's got ENC another layer. Two. It's ENC2, but it's compatible with C41 when you take the rim jet off. If I take that before you know they take the rim jet off, and put it in my machine, it's gonna, it's not gonna work right because we don't have the sprayer that takes off that layer. What does so the what, can look like? Oh, that just feels cool. That yeah. just feels neat. Like so, they, 
That's so awesome. so basically, yeah, it, you can go buy movie film and roll it into 35 millimeter sections and shoot er, and shoot it, but you have to send it to a lab that can take the rimjet off. What they've done is taken the rimjet off so you can process process that in C41. Um, what's really cool about that, or it's gonna, you're going to get some unique looks, and I'm not going to ruin it for you, but it has a lot of cool lighting. Like that's really heard, pretty I've, at night. I've heard reds look really good in it. Yeah, and the uh, at, at night, like neon lights are incredible. Um, oh, I shot really? Fire, yeah, I shot fireworks downtown one time, and uh, yeah, Fourth or New Year's fireworks, and I did. I, I just like I don't know if this is going to. I just shot. And it's the prettiest like firework. It's the horrible composition. I was literally standing there and I was like, click after I'd shot the stuff I thought I'd wanted to shoot, you know, and then I got that back and I was like, I should have shot all fireworks. This is way prettier color, you know, like the color is pretty amazing. Um, and it's what they shoot movies on. So you're going to get like cinema, you know, cinema vibe. So it's, it's, it's sort of about the daylight stuff. What, what do I, I, I've never shot. I've actually never shot that before. Um, is it but, 50, like ISO 50? Yeah, it is. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. So fine wow. grain. But they do take off that that layer on the back too. So I've never shot that. I think my friend Ryan has shot that a bunch. And so um, this tungsten is ISO 800. Man, I wish I'd have used it for fireworks the other night. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. That's amazing. So, okay. So Looking those are some new films that you're going to try out. I'm excited for you to try those out, man, because it's going to give you a different, some different feels. Yeah. Say. <laughs> yeah, the feels. The yeah. feels, man. Uh, I want to show you one more thing that I've been looking at. So can we go back to my screen here? Uh, so this is my uh, the Mount Rushmore shot of my kids. Black and white is amazing. I really enjoy black and white. Um, I'm going to zoom through this. One thing I noticed on film is this is not what I was going to bring up, but this is my buddy Adam and his wife Randy. They they are house parents at French Camp Academy, and they they spend a lot of time working with kids. Um, that was really fun. This is what I want to show you here. Check this out. So this isn't the best photo, but it's a three, oh, cool. a three dimensional photo. And it was shot with this camera over here. You can switch back over to the camera here. So this was shot. This is kind of a gimmick with a Nashika camera, right? Do I actually have film in it right now? I might have. No, I don't. I don't. Okay. I've seen that camera a million times online. I've never owned one. That's cool that you have one. Yeah. It. I thought it was really interesting. I might have film in there. I need to be careful. I need to be careful. I don't know if there's film in it or not. So it's been a while. Long story short, four lenses. It's a little bit gimmicky. Doesn't really have a meter on here at all. Um, Does it, it take just, four little small frames onto the, the... Four small frames, and okay. then you add them together, and you can create uh, you can create a 3D effect like that. And and so That's things so I'm, cool. I'm really getting into are the 3D photography, because I think it's amazing, because back in the day before YouTube, you know, you've seen these little Viewmasters, yes. right? These, these are amazing. Like, they're fantastic. And they were shot on... Uh, I actually have one. One second, I'm gonna grab it. Sorry. I wonder if you can create those, like the little, whatever those are called, the discs. They're shown on this bad boy right here. And I think this is awesome. So it's it's a 35 millimeter camera with the, the lenses separated at the, you know, the same distance as your eyes. Who makes that? This so, one was by Stereo Colorist TDC. Cool. Don't know. I found it at a uh, found it at a antique store. That's but really cool. Isn't it neat? So um, this tell is me you can make those discs. Discs? Oh yeah, those totally. Well, oh, who yeah. makes those? The discs? Yeah. Like I can make them. Like you can make them. So back in the day, I don't. Ha oh yeah, here it is. This is I'm doing what? a video. Yeah. I'm doing a video about this. I don't man, good because I want to do that. Of, <laughs> where's it at? Anyway, long story short, back in the day, there's these things called stereoscopes, and that's how people would, you know, you could see the Great San Francisco Fire after the fact. Can we just do this real quick? We're just gonna do this. Do I'm it. gonna make it here. Uh, talk. I'll give you a topic. 
talk amongst yourselves. Uh, <laughs> this church lady. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Destin, for hang- leaving me high and dry where I can just talk about absolutely nothing. Somebody give me something. Do we have any? Oh, here, he's back. He's back. He didn't leave me too high and dry. That wasn't too bad. So this this gets into the science stuff that I really enjoy. So I bought this from Canada. Yes, I Canada. Yeah, can you see this? Yeah, man. So this is called a sculptuoscope. And you can basically, it's a little, you, you put a, a coin in here. I think I can pull a coin out. This is amazing that you have that. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like I genuinely. I see one at a museum, I think. Yeah, so I got this before I met you. And so I've been working, I've been slowly working on a 3D uh, photography video. But that's so cool. This thing right here, if you open up the top, there are all these little cards in here. And you can't see it really well. But long story short, there's two images side by side. And it does the same thing as the Viewmaster. It was the predecessor to the Viewmaster. Okay. And so what I want to do, I've already done it is I want to create some digital images using two DSL, DSLRs that are side by side and do these wiggle grams. And so basically it's this, but modern. Anyway, I just think it's fascinating. No, that's very cool. The one I saw you turn a crank and it was a bunch of cards and it created a movie. That's what this is? Okay. There's a little, I don't know if you can see it. See this trigger right here? Yes. You, you click that trigger, and there's a whole... It's like a Rolodex. Right. So, so That's what light. I saw. That's something I saw. Yeah, yeah. Light that comes in here, and you can't see it, but you can see the... You see it? Oh, yeah. Look. There you go. See those cards flipping? That's so cool. Yeah. It's amazing, That dude. is really cool. So anyway, this is... I can't wait to see what you do with that, man. That's going to be is, really cool. I get really excited about this stuff. So who makes... Let's go back to the little... What do you call the little clicker thing? What's Viewmaster. That? Viewmaster. Who makes yeah. the discs to go in there with your images on them? Um, I, I'm, I'm talking about like you can make them. Like if you know what you're doing, like just you, take the card and then take the print and yeah, take the film. Okay, so it shoots really, really small squares at you. Yeah, but they're actually transparencies a little bit. So imagine like little bitty images E6. of E6. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you can put E6 in there, and okay. um, you just as long as you have the stereo offset correct which you can do i want that so bad could you yeah. imagine uh, like your your childhood or your kids childhood shot on those that that yeah that they get those discs later and they pop them in they like oh there's me and there's yeah me at the grand canyon or whatever yeah exactly and so and so you can do all this stuff and so what we did is we went on a road trip if you'll go back to the screen we, you know, I took some photos with a Nashika. It was a test. We, we took a road trip earlier this year in the, in the middle of lockdown. And the whole idea was we're going to document with nothing but film. And so this is the city museum in St. Louis. And so that's my, my sons. We're, we're up on top. We're like four stories in the air. We're, they're down this long hallway that's made out of welded wire. Watch this. And so you can, that's so cool. it like comes alive. And so it's just fascinating. So all the trigonometry that your mind is doing to, to put you in that 3D world is just fantastic. That is very so, cool that they have those cameras that, I mean, that's cool that you found that one too, that I don't even know. Can you get that? Is it all over eBay? I don't know. I know nothing about that kind of camera. Yeah. there. You, if you know what you're doing, you can find them. This, this is a, another version. It's like a knockoff. There's a guy in uh, France that's actually working on these for digital cameras. Um, the uh his name is matthew stern yeah matthew stern he's he's a really really interesting artist uh i don't know if you can see that or not but he's he's fantastic like he's really really good at what he does m-a-t-h-i-e-u-s-t-e-r-n and he likes to do all kinds of weird lenses and stuff like that but he's he's the one that introduced me to wiggle grams and um that's very cool i can't wait to see what you do with that that's gonna yeah. be interesting should be fun to see. yeah should, should be fun well cool anyway. man well, do, we, do we did we burn through your hour i think it's uh, been an hour and 20. So. oh sorry about that I, oh sorry. it's all good 
We could do yeah. whatever we we could do whatever we want. Yeah. Well, this is fun, man. I get a look from Sutherland like, no, we can't. We, we can't. We should end it. We're about done. Yeah. Dude, I just want to say thanks for uh, thanks for all the support from Indy. I really appreciate it. Indiefilmlab.com, right? Is that how people uh, reach out, how they can send you film and ask yeah, you questions, yes, all that stuff? absolutely. Yeah, send us some questions. And uh, I thank you. I mean, you put out a killer video on us. You're coming here and hang out with me for an hour and a half. I mean, time is valuable and... That just shows what a cool dude you are and how cool, uh, how into film you are. So do you have any plugs? You got some videos coming up? I mean, so your channel smarter every day. I know everybody already knows that. Don't worry about me, man. Just, I mean, like go check out Indie Film Lab. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to know. That's what we're here for. Ah, we're here here for you too. Supporting a small business. Yeah. That's that's what I appreciate it, man. What I'm all about. Yeah. Well, the video was great. And, uh, uh, so, Hey, I got a funny story before we wrap it up. You remember Bob? Which one? Bob. Bob, the guy I talk about in the video that I said yep. that I yep. had to search and find. Well, he's like 75 years old. Uh, so yeah. he's, I texted him literally. I had to ask him a question about one of the tanks in there. And uh, I texted him a few days after the video launched. And I said, I said, Hey Bob, uh, I have a question about this tank or blah, blah, blah. And I said, Oh, by the way, I mentioned you on this YouTube video we did or whatever. And he didn't write back for about an hour. And when he wrote back, he was like, my granddaughters are getting a kick out of you calling me a cool dude on YouTube. Like that's his <laughs> response. So he was so excited that he, his name was like on a video. And, uh, he's just like, he said, thank you. Like 10 times. He was just like, I can't, I, you know, I, I, di- I never knew I would be like on a YouTube video and, or my name. And it, I just said his name. I, he wasn't even in the video and he was so excited and so uh, we we gave him a little little happiness for a couple of days with his grandkids. So we connected, we bridged the gap between seventy five year old Bob and his and his grandkids. So they got that's to awesome, out man. Yeah, yeah that's so awesome. We made one person very happy. So that's what it's all about. Man. That is what it's all about. So yeah. It, so can we see some more uh, cool stuff from you, uh, film related in the future? I mean, not with Indy, but just in general. Like uh, you got that going on with the. The little yeah, uh, hopefully. So you got a couple of contacts we're going to reach out to. Hopefully we can make something go down. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's, that's going to be really fun. We should. If we can do that, I'm uh, super yeah. excited I about that. I think we can. I really do. So cool. Well, thank you so much, man. I guess we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm really bad at ending conversations. I will just keep talking to you about absolutely everything for hours. So I'm going to have, well, to you need, you need to come up with a, with a, like a sign off. So what I do, you know what when I, did I last video, time, I just I hit mute and just walked off. So no, I don't, I don't do really that. Do do that. that. <laughs> so, so I did, I do this, you turn the camera and I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to model how to do this and then you do Let's it. Let's do this. Okay. So this is what I would do. I was like, all right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. And so what you do is you say your name, look right into the camera. Look right into the camera and you just mean it. You, you you say you say your name. You say who you're from, who you're with, Indie All Film right. Lab, and then like come up with something like get out there and shoot some film or like you know something like that. Yeah, yeah I'll have to like type all that up and. and uh, no, no, you no, just do it. You, just you got, do it. Let's okay. Go. Yeah, we go. Long live film. Oh, that's a good one. So the, yeah, see, I need help with this. Hey guys, I'm Josh, and uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, thanks to our buddy Destin for coming on here and 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 talking film for an hour. And, uh, as, uh, as, as the plug, plug indie goes, film, you get a plug, plug indie film lab. I'm okay, Josh. Let, from let me indie do that film again. Do hey it again. guys, I'm Josh. I'm with indie film lab. And, uh, thank you so much for watching. And as always long live film. See, that was stupid. I'll, I'll figure it Cut out. It. Southern, like, got it. <laughs> <laughs>